Marta is a 13-year-old girl whose mother has studied real love and, in effect, resurrected her children from the dead. No kidding. I'm Greg Bear, and I firmly stand by that huge claim. Real love is incredibly powerful, which is why I recommend learning how to be a ridiculously effective parent. Visit realloveparents.com, sign up for the newsletter, subscribe to this YouTube channel to see the difference in yourself. So let's return to Marta and her mom. The family was in real trouble, but with loving and teaching, they're now flourishing. Marta called me to say, Grandpa, I'm old, so kids call me that. I'm so dumb. Now, right here is where we parents almost always screw up the conversation. We tend to say, oh no, you're not dumb. Well, why is that a mistake? How could it be wrong to stop a child from adopting a negative self-image, right? To answer that question, I ask you to imagine this scene. Your child is learning to ride a bicycle, but after repeated attempts, she's not succeeding. She falls down for like, you know, the sixth time, scraping her hand, and she looks to you for some kind of reassurance. And you say, you're doing great. But in that moment, almost every child is thinking, great? Are you kidding? I just fell down again. I can't stay upright for more than 10 feet, and you're calling that great. What kind of teacher are you? When we lie to our kids, even when it's a positive lie, they tend to discredit us as a source of reliable information and love. They don't believe us. So how can we respond to their mistakes or failures? Let's look at a real example as I continue to talk to Marta, who began with, I'm so dumb. And I said, yeah, sometimes you are dumb. In the process of learning something new, we have to make mistakes. And in those moments, we are kind of dumb. But so what? What really matters is the learning, not the mistake. And even when you're dumb, I love you, which matters way more than making a mistake. Now. Tell me what happened that made you say you're dumb. Marta said, well, I was having a good day, but after school, mama took me to the park. She talked to me about when me and Emily, her friend, were in the car and I was kind of impatient. I didn't like the way mama was pointing out my mistakes, so I didn't listen very well, end quote. I had spoken on another occasion to Marta's mother, and it turns out that Marta had been far more than kind of impatient. She'd been demanding, rude, and aggressive toward Emily as Emily drove her somewhere in the car. The conflict centered around Marta not getting something that she wanted from her sister. So I asked Marta, were you kind to Emily? Well, she said reluctantly with that, contorted face you've all seen many times, I interrupted and I said, right now, you're doing with me what you did with your mother. Well, but, and I interrupted her, honey, I don't care if you were demanding and annoying with Emily. Right now, I'm offering you a choice, the kind you don't usually get. You can fight me and feel alone, or you can choose to listen and learn something. What do you want to do? I'm really asking. It was obvious that Marta had not been asked many true questions in life. Instead, she'd heard only accusations in the form of a question. We all know this phenomenon, where somebody says, what are you doing? Which really means, what in the world do you think you're doing, you idiot? Or, why are you doing it that way? Meaning, that stupid way. And by the tone of the speaker's voice, we know that it's an accusation, not a question, even though it ends in a question mark, sort of. Hesitantly, Marta answered my, what do you want to do question. She said, I guess, I guess I want to learn something. And I chuckled. All your life, when people have pointed out something that you are doing wrong, their tone of voice has changed. And from their facial expression and body language, you could tell that they didn't like what you'd done, right? She nodded and said, yeah, that happens a lot. You didn't realize it consciously, but what you heard was that when you made mistakes, you were bad. Wrong equaled bad. And she nodded her head and said, yeah. And you still believe that. 
It's what you were taught early in life, so that lesson tends to stick. So when your mother helps you see an unloving or irresponsible behavior, or when I do, you hear it with that old equation, wrong equals bad. She nodded again. And I said, another way of saying wrong is stupid or dumb. So when you said you were so dumb and you felt bad about it, you were just repeating that old equation, dumb equals bad. You thought you were bad, but no, you were just wrong, not bad. How do you know? She asked. Can you tell the difference between a watermelon and a chicken? I asked her. Yes. How long does that take you? A second. And that's how long it took for me to see that you're a good person, a very good person. She smiled. You can tell that I love you, can't you? You can see it and feel it and hear it. Yeah, she said. So when I tell you that you did something stupid or even that you are stupid, you can tell that I'm not calling you bad, just stupid. Yeah, I guess so, she said. Well, that changes the equation. Mistakes are unavoidable. If you want to learn new things, you have to make decisions that will be wrong. You have to be stupid before you can become smart. We're really talking about ignorant here, not stupid, but I use the word stupid specifically because it's more threatening. If we can live with being stupid, we can live with almost any other label. She smiled again. In order to change the equation from wrong equals bad to wrong equals learning, all you have to add is love. If I love you while I point out that you're wrong or stupid, you can take what I say as information, not a threat. That's cool, she said. And your mom loves you too. So you've almost got like a crowd of people who love you. That changes everything. In that moment, Marta began to change her understanding of what mistakes mean. That's a huge change, one that can serve all of us well as we learn and grow.